Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a quick video today uh, looking at unrolling a curvature graph. So if you imagine this corner here, curvature graph, once you turn the curvature graph on, so there you can see the curvature graph. Uh, in some situations I think it's just a little bit easier to imagine some of the um, some of what's going on if this was unrolled. So you imagine we unrolled this arc here and then left the graph above it so you can see what's going on without the interference of the curve. I know in most situations you can just read the curvature graph but I thought I'd see if I could uh, unroll it with a grasshopper definition. So just quickly I've got a whole pile of curves up here, various ones from my little corner experiments. So down here I've got the uh, receiver with the uh, with the curves and then I've got points to show like it um, these these blue dots show the end of any spline segments or arcs etc. Uh, so what I've done first is I've measured the length of that. This whole curve that comes in through here gets joined, measure the length and then we make a target line which is the same length. So that's that green line you can see there. And then I've divided this curve, uh, sorry, the main curve down here. You can see there so a number of points which is adjustable and then the, at those points I've sampled the curvature and then I've made a, a proof curvature definition down here which takes that curvature information and reconstructs the curvature graph which gives me this blue line here so I can change the scale of that. So I need a proof to know that my what I'm doing is actually a, applies to when I flatten things out. And the reason these have failed here, well, there's some issues, is because there's infinite curvature on the straight lines. Okay, so up the top here, again I've done the same thing, I've divided this line up using the same amount of divisions as down here. And then I've had to sift out a few things like to account for curvature, like inflections and curvature, uh, negative and positive. And then the end result is we have this. Uh, that's a polyline and I can bring in the lines as well which is there so that's quite dense so that that's basically uh, I have multiplied out the the curvature value uh, this is a, a radius of 10 so the curvature value is point, point 0.1 so multiply that by 100 and so that's actually those lines there are the same length as the actual radius Okay, so that's doing what you'd expect. So let's look at something a bit more interesting. Go over here and I'll bring up the clothoidal approximation G2 three piece. Okay, so with the clothoidal, as you can see here, it's curving. And so this is the clothoidal approximation, the section here, which is the section here. So Tony, uh, as you expected, it's pretty much linear. Uh, which is, I believe, what the clothoidal transition is, does is it takes a uh, makes a transition, and the rate of change of curvature is linear between a line and an arc. So, hey presto, there you go. So that's easier to visualise now that I've flattened it out. So some other things you can look at: G three one piece, one piece. This is a bit. So that's a single spline, and that's trying to approximate the arc through here. So you can see it's it's fairly flat through there, which means it's it's pretty um, consistent in curvature, which you can read through here as well. Uh, G3 one piece with some relief, which is smoother. It sort of allows a bit of space on the ends, so you can see there there's more space for the curvature to ramp up. Um, same thing here. So it's all matching up. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got here as a, a flattened representation of what's going on down here. And one more, what are we looking at? Oh yeah, three piece. So the three piece one I did, sorry, I made a G3 connection on each end here in the same space as the G2 one. So the curvature was obviously a bit wonky. So when that's straightened out, it's quite obvious. Very obvious arc section here because it's there's no change. But then once I give that some relief, three piece with relief. There we go. Okay, I've got a few other sections in here quickly. I'll just show you. So I've got that. Apple Watch, so you can see what's going on there. This matches up. 
so there's quite a lot going on and the other thing is I've got a section through a a chair I modelled up a while back a number of years ago in Rhino uh, the Victra Hell just as a project so this is a section through a chair on a funny angle so uh, it's not necessarily the surfaces aren't necessarily the best but so you can see what's happened here I'll just increase the scale of it So you can see there that this is the end, the end, this kick here, and then it runs down. Bit of wobbly stuff going on in the middle here, and then around the back. So flattened the curvature off. Right, I'm going to wrap this up here. I'll put the grasshopper uh, definition of internalized the sections up here, so you'll be able to play with it. Probably better ways to do this down here, but seems to work just as a proof. Anyway, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.